Hey, so I'm Taylor. I'm a bit of a geography lover. Otherwise, why would I start this channel? And today, I'm going to try and answer the question, what is viticulture? So, to put it simply, viticulture is the growing of grapes to make wine. But, of course, we're not just going to leave it there. You might just think, oh yeah, just wine. What's so interesting about wine? But it turns out this growing of grapes to make wine is influenced by so many things and they all link and it's so interesting and I really am excited by it and I really hope that you are too. So we're going to break up into three main parts. Nature, spatial patterns and future directions. So, in terms of the nature of viticulture, yeah, as I said before, it's growing of grapes to make wine. And the different climates um, help produce different types of grapes to make different types of wines. That's why we have red wines and white wines. So, I'm, yes, I'm 18, so I can legally drink because I live in Australia. Being 18, yes, I am able to drink, but I still don't have as much experience with wine as a lot of other people may have. So please excuse me if I make a few mistakes about different types of wine and what they taste like because I've only tried a few types. But generally, red wines tend to be sweeter. So they're grown in warmer climates because warm, warmer temperatures, more sunlight, stimulates more photosynthesis, creates more sugar production. And so the grapes have more sugar in them, the wine has more sugar in it, and so it's sweeter. White wines, on the other hand, tend to be drier and more bitter, and so that's why white wine grapes are generally grown in cold areas, such as Champagne is produced in Champagne. Wow, I didn't know that! Um, but yeah, Champagne is grown in Champagne where it's cold and really harsh climate, and they produce white sparkling wines. So you've got this general trend of warm temperatures producing red wine, cool temperatures producing white wine. It's also this um, general trend which links us into um, the spatial patterns of there's two belts in which grapes are produced because grapes are very picky when it comes to climate. They need specific temperatures and specific um, rainfall and water levels, otherwise they well, in terms of water, if they don't get enough, they stress out. They don't produce quality grapes. If they get too much water, they stress out and they don't produce quality grapes. Um, so we'll probably go a bit more into that later. Uh, hopefully I can make another video about the biophysical factors. Um, but yeah, they're very picky about their, their climates. So here's a dodgy map I produced earlier. Um, can you see that? Um, where the, they generally grow in between 30 and 50 degrees north and south in these two belts because those are the areas that are um, best for producing grapes for wine. It's grapes like those climates. Um, there's also, um, in terms of spatial patterns, the battle between the old world and the new world. So the, the old world is your um, traditional um, countries, the European countries. So when you think of the top wine producers and exporters, um, probably the first thing that comes to your mind is Italy, France, Spain, all of them are the top three wine producers and exporters. Um, so obviously there's other countries in Europe that also produce a lot of wine and such as Portugal, Germany and such. Um, but then there's also the New World, which is basically everywhere else, such as Chile, Australia, New Zealand, America, China. They're, they're some really big um, wine producers as well. And then there's also this tr um, spatial trend, which links us into the, the future trends of viticulture, um, of emerging economies. So emerging economies are starting to produce an increasing amount of wine. Um, as their economies become stronger, they're able to produce more wine, which is a luxury product. So countries like China, Brazil, 
Russia, India, and South Africa. They're emerging economies. It links us into the future trends um, and directions of viticulture. So yeah, one of them is the rise of emerging economies. There's also the rise of the new world. And so new world wines are becoming more popular because of many reasons, such as um, they're more sustainable. Um, old old wines, they use traditional methods and sometimes this isn't the most sustainable or um, best way of going about it, but they have laws, um, like such in France, it's called Appellation Controlly. The law s states like you have to produce this much wine, it has to be this quality, it has to be this type, so that they can like maintain their image. Um, so it leaves them with not as much room to experiment with sustainable um, f like viticultural methods. Um, so the New World, they don't have these restrictions. So they can produce different types of wine, more sustainable wines. Um, there's more room to experiment because they don't have this image to uphold and these laws um, restricting their innovation. So, so the rise of the New World is really a strong future direction of viticulture at the moment. We've also got the issue of climate change. Temperatures are increased, that's going to change what types of grapes can be grown and where. It's going to influence um, rainfall. It's going to make varied patterns of rainfall across the globe. It's um, a bit more, the rainfall is a bit more unpredictable. So yeah, climate change, the rise of the new world and emerging economies, they're all um, three basic future directions of viticulture. And so hopefully um, by addressing the future trends, spatial patterns and nature of viticulture, we've helped I answer the question of what is viticulture. So until, until next time, Taylor out.